Hello everybody, thanks for, uh, thanks for taking the time to join us today for the Air Inc. 615 uh, Data Load Protocol webinar. Appreciate your interest and in you taking the time to join us. Uh, what we have planned is about, oh, probably about a 30 minute webinar today. I'm Troy Trashinsky. I'll be uh, taking you through some slides and an overview of the Data Load Protocol for, for most of the time here. And then about the last five minutes, uh, my colleague John Cole will take over and give you all a short demo of our Air Inc. 615 data load software solution uh, that we have here at AIT. So thanks again for joining us, about 30 minutes, and, uh, and, and we'll get started here. So Air Inc. 615 data loaders, uh, defined in the Air Inc. 615 spec. This specification defines the characteristics and requirements for two types of data loaders. Uh, one, a PDL, or a carry-on portable data loader. So a piece of equipment that you would carry on, connect to an aircraft to to do loads to airborne computers. Uh, it also specifies the form fit function and requirements for an airborne data loader. So this would be a data loader that's actually uh, part of the aircraft and resides on board the aircraft. Uh, 615 defines the electrical connections between the, the loader and the on aircraft airborne uh, computers that it's used to load. And the primary application of data loading uh, of Airing 615A is uploads. Uploading uh, data and software functional programs from media provided by a user using the data loader to airborne computers. So uh, basically doing software upgrades to on aircraft systems. A secondary application which is also covered and and provisioned for in, in the protocol is the the download of data from airborne computers. So using the data loader to retrieve log files uh, uh, you know and status data from airborne computers or to download the loadable software also. Uh, Airink 615 data loaders utilize the Airink 429 bus, so Airink 429 serial bus uh, interfaces between the data loader and the airborne computers are what are used to transfer the data and files. Airink 615A is a newer version of the Airink 615 spec. Airink 615A covers the use of Ethernet for the, the connection between the data loader and the airborne computers. And today we're, we're only going to talk about Airink 615, so data loading over 429. But in the past, I think a year or so ago, we did also a webinar similar to this, except covering Airink 615A. And uh, if you're interested with that, I think we still, uh, we still host the video and recording of that on our website at the link shown below here, so you can check that out. And it's a pretty long le link, don't worry about it, I will provide an email this presentation to all of the attendees um, after the presentation here so you, you can uh, you can get the link then and, and just click on it. So as I said an Airink 615 data loader uh, uses Airink 429 for connection to the airborne computers so the specification requires that a data loader at least have two output or two transmit 429 channels and at least four inputs or four receive Airink 429 channels. It does provide uh, in the spec uh, optionally to have two additional transmitters and four additional receivers. So w what this allows is if, if you don't have any, if it's just strictly simple cabling uh, and no kind of switching network or any kind of electronics in between the data loader and the loadable uh, airborne computers, this allows for up to eight connections uh, with a simple cable from a data loader to up to eight uh, airborne computers. Each of the transmitters and receivers, the Airing 429 interfaces on the data loader uh, are required to support, support both the high speed 100 kilobit per second and the low speed uh, 12 and a half kilobit per second uh, options of Airing 429. Additionally, uh, the Airing 615 spec also uh, defines and requires four discrete signals be provided uh, at the interface between the data loader and the aircraft. And so these, there, there's no real specific um, use defined for these in the in the 615 spec but the, but they're there and they're there to provide you know basically application specific needs so maybe if there's a, a loadable a loadable system that needs a discrete signal or a couple discrete signals so next here I have uh, basically a diagram showing a, a you know using a minimal data loader with two transmitters and four receivers to simultaneously connect up to four airborne um, airborne computers. So in this case you would have to share the uh, output transmitter lines with two data loaders or I'm sorry two loadable targets and in doing that that means you'd have to use 
since you have two uh, targets connected to the same transmitting channel, you would communicate with them on different labels. So you would have uh, an ARI 429 label uh, defined for data load operations assigned to each loadable target sharing the channel, and it would be have to be a different one. And then, obviously, you'd have an independent, non-shared ARI channel from each target coming back to the data loader. The combination of the transmit channel and the receive 429 channel that's used for bi-directional communications with a target are referred to as a bus in the 615 spec. So TXRX pairs combined into a bus for data load operations uh, with the, the, the loadable target. The way the load process works is that the user or operator will have some sort of media, um, say a floppy disk or maybe it's, it's in the form of a, a directory or a folder on the host computer that's hosting the data load function. And that contains all the files, the, the loadable software that would be loaded to the airborne computer. Also, the Air Inc. 615 spec specifies that the root of that media must also contain a file called a config.ldr. And the contents and form and function of this file are what are sort of the primary focus and definition in Air Inc. 615. This config.ldr file basically contains the information about the configuration of the interface to the airborne computer, so which of the Air Inc. 429 channels are used to transmit and receive data, which labels are used, and also it provides the sequence of instructions of files to upload and also optionally files to download from the airborne computer. Mo primarily, uh, and, and in most cases, the data load operations simply are executed based on the instructions in this config.ldr uh, file but it should be noted that there is also what's called a control mode of operation. In, in this case, what happens is as the data loader is processing the instructions in this config.ldr file, the target has the option to send messaging to the data loader to put the data loader uh, essentially into a server mode and, and basically have the t onboard target take control of the operations and instruct the data loader of which files it would like to upload and which files it would like to download. So um, the spec basically requires um, allows for a purely data loader driven load process or um, optionally uh, the airborne target can put the data loader like I said in a control mode and it can be basically the airborne computer that's driving the load process. The config.ldr uh, file uh, for legacy loads that maybe would reside on floppy disks and in most cases on several floppies uh, there's a requirement that the config.ldr file uh, reside on each disk so that as you're swapping disks to transfer maybe large files that span disks all the instructions are always there for the data loader. As I said it specifies the target, the configuration for communications with the target so this means the address label that the data loader uses for communication so this is the label that the data loader should expect to receive messaging from the target at. It also defines like I said the TX RX bus pairs and the configuration of those so high speed low speed area 429 and also the label that the data loader should use when transmitting uh, ARIC 429 bus words to the target. Also, the list and sequence of the file names that are to be uploaded uh, and downloaded are provided, and also information about the contents of the disk and the index of the disk if it's a multi-disk type of load. Here I have a, a pretty simple example of what the contents of a config uh, LDR file would look like. So at the very top of the file you have the, the label, the LBL entry, and this defines the label that the data loader, the ARIC 429 label that the data loader listens for communications from the target on. Then after that, you can have a sequence of bus definitions. So these are the B1D, B2D, and so on entries. And the, the format of this is you have the, the, numer the number indicating the transmit bus, the number indicating the receive ARIC 429 interface, and then the label used for communication with that target on that bus. The H uh, can also optionally be an L. This is where you specify if it's a high speed or low speed area 429. So in this case you can see I'm, I actually have two buses or two targets sharing transmitter one, and then they obviously have their own um, line area 429 channel coming back um, to the data loader, and because they're sharing the same transmitter they have to use separate labels. So that's the definition. Uh, section of the config LDR defining how we do the actual communication with the target. Then next we have the actual definition of the files to be transferred. So in this case I, I have an example of defining four files that are to be uploaded to the four different targets defined in the bus definitions above. The format of this, uh, these entries are essentially the name of the file on the media that you're transmitting, 
the block size, that's the 1K value here. So this is the size, uh, the chunks that the file is broken up into and sent to the target uh, during the upload operation. And then there's a true false indicator, which basically indicates in this case false that data file one Dot exe does not span multiple floppy disks. It's all on, on one. If, if this was a true, that indicates that the, the file spans multiple disks and that, that when all the contents of the, the portion of the file residing on this disk have been transferred, that the data loader would prompt the user to insert the next disk. So that's what that indicator indicates. Uh, and finally, there's a bus priority section. And this is where you define essentially the order in which the files are, the file transfers are done. So in this case, we have bus one is priority one, so that means data file one would be transferred first. Bus three is priority two, so data file three would go second. And then uh, data file two, then data file four, based on the bus priority. So here we have a figure tying kind of it all together. So you can see the bus definitions here match up with the, the network diagram that I had provided uh, with the labels are indicated here also and the channels that are used for communication with each of the targets and so the way this process again would would um, would be executed is the data loader would use transmitter one receiver one for target one transmitter uh, one receiver two for target two and so on and then data file one data file three data file two and data file four would then be uploaded on their various buses to the associated target and all the channels would be high speed airing 429, 100 kilobit per second channels.